Hello, I'm Jillian Fortner and welcome to Inside City, an interview show produced by the students of San Diego City College. Each week we are talking to the newsmakers of the campus. Today we are going to talk to Professor Kate Stone and City College student Vincent Bassoni. They are both members of the City College Theater Department and we will be getting to see an inside scoop on the revival in-person theater on campus and about the upcoming shows that we can look forward to watching. But first, we're going to give you a sneak peek into City College Performing Arts. Let's take a look. After going off campus at the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, San Diego City College's theater program is finally back on campus. The program is presenting two new shows this month, Macbeth and Twelfth Night. Both shows will be modernized takes on stories set in and around San Diego. Audiences will be allowed on campus to watch the shows in the Sabelle Theater. Tickets are now on sale online and will run from late October to early November. For Inside City, I'm Joel Garcia. We are very excited to be speaking to both of you today, and I know Vincent's somewhere else. We will be starting with the director of the play, Professor Kate Stone. Hi, so, how's it going? So my first question is, uh, San Diego City uh, College Dramatic Arts are officially back in fall for the in-person for audience members to attend, and I was wondering, after the production is going to kick off this semester. Like, tell us more about that. Yeah, so we are back. We're doing live theater uh, at City, which is really, really exciting. Um, because of COVID, uh, we haven't been able to perform live uh, for a year and a half now. So we're really excited to be back on campus. We are doing two different productions, and we're actually doing something really unique, which is that we are running both of the productions at the same time in repertoire. So we're performing uh, on alternating nights. Um, so we'll do one production on Thursday night and then the next production on Friday and so forth for the run of uh, both performances. We're doing two Shakespeare plays because um, Shakespeare really kind of lends itself toward that sort of style of doing theater. Uh, we're doing a production of Macbeth that I am directing and then a production of Twelfth Night uh, that my colleague Katie Rada is directing. So we're very excited about both of those shows going up soon. Yes, that is super exciting. So this is the first show this season that is in person and you're directing Shakespeare, uh, Macbeth. Could, um, could you briefly explain what the plot of the show is about? Sure, absolutely. Um, so the plot of Macbeth, and usually you don't say the name of the show if you're standing in a theater because of its uh, supposed superstitious cursed history, but I'm not in a theater right now, so I'll go ahead and say it. Um, the plot of the show is that there is um, the character Macbeth uh, who is given a prophecy by three witches, and the witches say that basically he's gonna be king uh, eventually. And Macbeth decides that he's going to kind of take matters into his own hands. And so he kills the current king, King Duncan. Um, and Duncan's son, who's the rightful heir, flees away to England. Um, and then Macbeth begins a kind of reign of terror and sort of just basically kills a bunch of people um, until he crosses uh, kind of the wrong person and ends up killing the family uh, of someone named Macduff and Macduff kind of vows revenge on Macbeth and goes to England and gets Malcolm, the king's son, to come back. Um, and then it's basically civil war in Scotland. And so the whole kind of final act of the play is these sort of two armies against each other as Macbeth tries to defend the throne um, that he stole from King Duncan. So that's sort of the play. I won't give away the ending, but it is a tragedy. So some people die at the end. Yeah, thank you for explaining that. So you had mentioned that choosing a Shakespeare play was deliberate because it can be open to interpretation. Given where we are as a society with the COVID-19 pandemic, are you planning to shape the play in a way that fits the current times? Absolutely. So that's part of the fun of Shakespeare. Um, I think a lot of people, when they hear Shakespeare, they get kind of intimidated um, because it's a lot of language. It's kind of tough to understand what's going on sometimes. But um, I like to think that we can make Shakespeare accessible. I like to think that Shakespeare is not something that should belong just to kind of elite wealthy audiences. Um, one of the things that I really love about Shakespeare's characters 
is that they always say exactly what they're thinking, right? There's no hesitation, there's no delay. They just talk and they say things in these beautiful, eloquent ways. And I think that that's such a cool thing that's relatable to anyone, right? What if we all had that ability to say things in beautiful, eloquent ways all of the time? Um, so I like to think that we can kind of claim Shakespeare as our own, right? Shakespeare's dead. He's not going to care what we do with his plays. Um, and so for this production specifically, we're setting it uh, in downtown San Diego. And we're setting it years after the apocalypse has happened. Um, so kind of a slightly futuristic uh, production of the play where the apocalypse is sort of burned out downtown San Diego and all of the characters have resorted sort of back to tribal identities in order to survive the apocalypse. Um, so it's been a fun production. It's been something we can really kind of uh, enjoy as a cast, kind of that idea of world building. Um, with the play and it makes the language come alive. It kind of hits a different way when it's something that feels a little bit more contemporary. My colleague, um, Katie Rada, who's doing her Twelfth Night production is setting hers in San Diego as well. She's doing um, Twelfth Night, which is a comedy, but setting it in uh, La Jolla and kind of doing a modern sort of TikTok, Instagram culture version of Twelfth Night. Um, which we're really excited about as well. So both plays are set in San Diego and sort of modern or future timelines, um, which I think makes them really relevant and fun. I'm really intrigued. I wanna go see these now. So- Absolutely, yeah. you'll have to come see them. So there's many superstitions in the performing arts and one of them revolves around the name that cannot be said in a theater. We actually call it the M word and said, um, you guys replace it with the Scottish play, which is the show that you guys are doing. Uh, could you tell us like, why, what's the backstory behind this superstition? Sure, one of the really fun things about this play is it's a perfect play for Halloween. It's full of witches and ghosts and haunting and people coming back from the dead and all sorts of things. But there's, there's always been, people have loved this play ever since it was first written. Um, and uh, there's been a lot of superstition, obviously, that's built up around it, right? There's kind of that claim that if you say the name of the play in a theater, it's you're going to have a cursed production or whatever, um, which, <laughs> as, as I have heard it, is because um, this used to be such a popular play that uh, whenever a theater was about to shut down and didn't quite have the finances to keep creating plays and was about to go under, um, they would always do a version of this play because it was guaranteed to bring in audiences. It was gonna be a real people pleaser production. Um, and so I think the play kind of got this, this uh, notoriety as sort of the play that you do before your theater company shuts down. Um, and so some people, I think, uh, it led them to think the play was cursed. But that's where I've heard it comes from is that you just, it's sort of, you do it so your theater company doesn't shut down. Um, but then when it does, maybe it was the fault of the last play that you did. So who knows? We have, we've, we don't say it as a cast when we're in performances together, but you can, if you accidentally slip up, you can break the curse by uh, going outside of the theater, spinning around three times, spitting over your shoulder, saying a curse word and knocking on the door to come back in and waiting for the stage manager to let you back in the theater. So it's, it's one of those sort of fun rituals that we've done as a cast. And it's only happened two or three times. So I'm, I'm thinking we're probably, hopefully, knock on wood, okay with this production of it. Well, thank you, Kate. And that's all very exciting, uh, learning about the Scottish play. Don't say the M word. We're gonna go take a short break really quick. And when we'll come back, we're gonna get to know our actor, Vincent Bassoni. Stay tuned. What to expect when you're expecting? Like here? A teenager. Today, I'm going to show you how to team-proof your home. First step, hide the car keys. Preferably somewhere they would never look. Challenges will come up. Be ready for them. Hi, honey. Ready for the mom. You don't use mannequins in the mannequin challenge. You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. <laughs> Welcome back to Inside City. So now we are with Vincent Bassoni, and he's one of the actors in Macbeth. So my first question for Vincent 
is so you're playing the role of uh, Banquo. Is that how you pronounce it? I'm pretty correct. Uh, okay, so he's like the loyal psychic and best friend to the main character. And I was wondering, like, what similarities do you share with the character you play, like personality-wise? Sure. Um, I think part of the fun of Shakespeare is just being able to bring your own personality um, into the character because uh, he writes it very open-ended. Um, and I have been described as someone who always looks on the, the positive side of things, glass half full, um, whether it's with my work or just with friends. And so I feel like I've been able to bring that where Macbeth is definitely a tragedy. Um, sad things are, are going around and mysterious things are happening. Um, and I, I try to get behind Macbeth and, and really support him in his, in his role um, as he tries to become king. It doesn't necessarily work out for all parties, but uh, that's definitely a way I have been um, just bringing my own kind of my own relationship to to the play. Yeah, so I remember you told us, Vincent, that you're actually coming back to school and um, you you were a business administration major and you already graduated. And so I'm a bit like coming to the acting world is like super different. So from being in the business world is very different from being an actor but there's gotta be parallels as well. Can you tell us in what ways that business and acting go hand in hand? Absolutely. Um, I think the biggest thing off the bat is in the business world, you're, you're managing relationships. Um, it's interacting with clients and customers um, and you wanna put your best foot forward. Um, and I've been able to translate that into the theater. I think just the camaraderie of the actors and the director, um, as well as the stage manager is just managing relationships. Um, prioritizing time and and just giving people the time and, and putting in the work. Um, so I think there there's major correlations between being in the business world and, and being part of a production. Um, and if anything, I think this is going to help me kind of in my role as a, you know, working, working in just everyday day to day business adventures, basically um, bringing bringing in you know, the ability to just sit down with folks and, and to really, you know, hit the ground running. So the show Macbeth is one of Shakespeare's uh, tragedy shows, but he also produced a lot of comedies as well. And I know you're pretty new to acting. This is your first show ever. Do you see yourself auditioning for like a more comedic show in the future? Absolutely. Um, I think some of my favorite movies are comedies. Um, one of my favorite actors is Adam Sandler and he just, his movies and the what the range he has, like he can do serious, or definitely comedies. Um, so I, I would definitely love to see myself, uh, you know, take the plunge and, and try a comedy, try something different. Um, but I figured, you know, if I could if I could start with the weighty play of Macbeth and Shakespeare, then hopefully I could I could go into comedy as well. This was this is definitely a good litmus test for uh, for things to come. So when you're like done with this show, where do you see yourself like auditioning in the future? Like, would you do a community theater show? Would you even try professional theater? Like, what do you see your, for yourself in the future? You know, I, I think as you know, we continue to push forward through this pandemic, there's definitely going to be a need for live in person theater. Um, so it'd be great to see, you know, just San Diego have more options. Um, I think I would definitely come back to the City College to, to give that a try. Um, that would be wonderful. And then just to keep my ears open for anything in community theater, um, maybe even auditions for, for other things, use this as a stepping stone and just to meet great people in the industry. Um, so very grateful for City College to, to give students this opportunity and uh, look forward to what the future has to hold. That's awesome. So thank you so much for joining us, Vincent. Everyone should go check him out in Macbeth. It's his first acting debut, so exciting. So thank you for joining us for this edition of Inside City. That's all we have for tonight. And remember to follow SD City Times on Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Thank you and good night.